All right, everybody, thanks for joining us today. We'll give folks just a couple minutes here to get settled in uh, and logged in. I know we've got quite a big group today, so thanks for joining us. Uh, let's see, as people are kind of filtering in here, just because we do have a larger group today, uh, biggest thing we ask, we have it set to mute you on entry, uh, just because we have quite a few people registered. Um, our panelists will be kind of talking and unmuting themselves, but if you wouldn't mind just leaving yourselves muted during the presentation, just so we don't run into any audio issues, that would be awesome. A um, couple other notes as people kind of work their way in here. Uh, today's presentation, as you saw, uh, obviously, when you registered, is all about our residence life and dining kind of opportunities and facilities, uh, especially from the student perspective. So we have uh, a couple current student ambassadors and panelists here. We're joined by Parker uh, and Janae and Phil. We're also, though, joined by Max Wright from Residence Life. Uh, so if we run into more specific questions or things that you maybe want to know a little bit about, he's going to be here as a great resource to, to give us a little bit more information on that as well. Uh, so what we'll do, a uh, couple things just note-wise for you. Uh, we've got some great content that we're going to go through and, and cover for our students as far as things that we'll ask and make sure that we touch upon. Uh, if you have questions, though, and we encourage you to submit questions because we know that this sort of information generates a lot of questions and, and unknowns in some places, uh, feel free to put those in chat. Make sure you're chatting to everyone or to the panelists uh, so we can see them and I'll make sure that our students get those and, and get answers to you and all that sort of good stuff. We are also recording this event. Uh, so as we you know, move toward the housing application window opening up here on April 1st, if you wanna go back and reference some of the stuff we covered today or things like that, we'll make sure that we have links added to our YouTube channel for you. So with that being said, looks like most folks have joined at this point. So again, thanks for joining us. My name is Max. I'm one of our staff members here uh, in the admissions office. Uh, and what we'll do is I'll have our panelists uh, kind of introduce themselves for you, just give themselves a little bit of information on where they are in school, uh, where they're coming from, uh, and then also uh, because we're talking a little bit about residence life, uh, what their living experiences uh, either were like when they were on campus or have been like up to this point. So uh, Parker, why don't we start with you and then Janae and then Phil. Sweet. My name is Parker. I'm a sophomore here at Mines. Um, I'm studying chemical engineering and uh, getting a minor in biology as well. Um, and I lived in Maple Hall my freshman year. Um, my name is Janae. I'm a senior in chemical engineering and I'm getting my like specialty in process engineering with a minor in economics. I um, lived in Maple also <laughs> my first year here and then I lived in Mines Park for about a year and a half after that. Cool. And I'm Phil. I'm a senior studying statistics and data science. So I'm doing the combined four plus one program. So my undergrad is in statistics, my master's in data science with a focus in economics. I also lived in Maple Hall for my first year. And then I've also lived off campus in a nearby apartment and then also currently in a house pretty much in downtown Golden. Awesome. And we promised we didn't plan it that way just to stack it with Maple folks, but they apparently all are very popular. So um, thank you all. I think a good question to kind of kick us off here, uh, because this is sort of a, a, a shared experience, right, that most, if not all of our students who end up at Minds end up having. Um, maybe talk a little bit about when you were coming in as a, a prospective student, kind of what you expected as far as your, your living experience on campus, uh, and then what, you know, what you enjoyed most about it in that first year, because, you know, there's a lot of change that this involves, and it's a new experience for people in their very first time. So kind of what was that like for you? Just kind of sum it up in a, in a couple words and, and maybe tell us what you liked most, what was the most surprising to you, things like that. So uh, let's do the same order. Parker, we'll start with you. Yeah, that's a great question. Obviously, um, living in a dorm is quite the experience. Um, I thought it was a lot of fun. You get to meet um, a bunch of new people um, and sort of sort of discover who you are. I know that's sort of cheesy, um, but living at home, you're sort of under your parents' watch. So, so um, living in a dorm is definitely a great way to experience some freedom um, and also discover your independence. 
I remember coming into college and like being concerned that it wouldn't really feel like home for a while. But honestly, if you just bring like some of your stuff, definitely don't bring all of it because you can't fit it all and you'll regret your choices for moving so many things. Um, but like just putting like a couple things up on the wall or like putting out like lamps and decorations like makes it feel like home. So I was definitely worried about that. So don't be afraid to like personalize it. Um, and then I guess I just really loved how like kind of in the middle of campus you were, it was really easy to be involved on in everything that was going on, both like in the residence halls and around on campus, just because you're like right there in the middle of all of it. I would agree with that. Um, I think coming into it, I really didn't have many expectations. I think they were, they were, they really didn't exist. I didn't really know what I was coming into just because it's so new. And I think one of the pleasant surprises, and I'm sure we'll talk quite a bit about this, is that the community was so strong and so supportive and there was always something to do on campus. And I, I think we'll talk more about that probably <laughs> soon, so. Phil, that's actually a great segue. That was my next question on my list for you. Um, you know, community obviously is a big thing for students in any sort of college campus experience, but I think especially in the residence halls, particularly for students who, you know, this is their first time away from home and maybe you don't have a lot of classmates or friends who ended up going to the same school as you. So uh, maybe if you all would mind sharing a little bit of some of those, those community aspects that you saw, like favorite things that happened in the halls or, or opportunities to connect, uh, even if it's just kind of like, yeah, this is what my floor did with my RA or like what sort of systems were in place to start building those connections for you? Yeah, so um, as freshmen, usually most of everyone is taking um, the same sort of classes. So I found it um, pretty nice to sort of go to like a study room in the dorm and um, they usually have whiteboards and stuff. So I'd be like writing something for physics on the whiteboard and someone would pass by in the hall and be like, oh, I'm working on the same homework. Like, can we work together? And so you sort of um, like meet people that way, especially because everyone is in the same classes, stuff like that. Um, and then usually RAs and stuff will do um, pretty frequent events. So I know um, on my floor in Maple, we did a lot of movie nights, um, board game nights and stuff like that. So lots of events get planned. Um, and since you're taking classes, you get to like eat a lot of people, uh, which was my favorite part of living in a residence hall. There was usually something going on like every week. So your RA would plan it or you could hop to another floor and like go with another group if you wanted to do something. We did like karaoke night where if you came down, you got to eat like McDonald's, like McNuggets. So that was nice. We just got some food and got to sing. Um, I remember too, at the beginning of school, we go um, like as a floor on a hike up South Table Mountain, which is like Golden's kind of in a valley and that's one of the ones that's like up high. It's like a 30 minute hike. It's super cool up top. You get a nice view of Golden in Denver. Um, but like they do stuff like that all the time. And then we also have our residence hall association or RHA and they put on a ton of different events out the year. So it's nice to be involved um, just by talking to people. You'll see posters and stuff too in the halls. Yeah. Um, and on top of that, like my floor also did like the South Table hike. Um, we also had, they also put events off on campus. So I remember we went like rollerblading and ice skating. They would like provide transportation to go to the facility as well, which is nice. And one of the benefits because you're on campus is that everything going on on campus is really easy to do and be a part of. Um, I mean, it is anyways, but especially that you're on campus, it's a matter of walking out your room, walking five minutes to the classroom or wherever the event is and participating. So it's so easy to be engaged. We like to say in a lot of aspects on campus, if you're getting bored, come find one of us because we'll find something for you to do. It's very hard to go uh, unentertained, if you will. Um, one of you had mentioned, I think, kind of talking a little bit about that sort of development and community in the halls. Um, I'm curious, I, I forgot to ask before we started, um, did any of you three uh, end up living in theme learning communities or TLCs? Gotcha, I couldn't remember on that one. So uh, for those of you watching who maybe aren't um, super familiar, themed learning communities are kind of these 
these uh, communities that we have that are set up around specific philosophies or ideas that live within the residence halls. So there's a couple different aspects that students can look at. We have ones that are around leadership and adventure. Uh, we have ones set up around honors, uh, things like visual and performing arts communities. So even beyond the different opportunities that you're going to find in these distinct different residence hall communities, uh, you're going to find some really good opportunities if you want to dig a little bit deeper uh, to live in or apply to those different communities as well. So uh, it's definitely a sort of situation I think you find in the residence halls where they really do kind of develop into that home away from home for students in a really positive way. Um, actually, speaking of TLCs, Matt, Max, this might be more of a question for you. Uh, I just saw a question come in in chat um, for uh, the athleticism and wellness uh, TLC. Where might that be found uh, on campus for students if they're looking at options? I am checking that right now. My apologies for putting you on the spot. <laughs> oh, you're no worries. Um, a and W will be in Randall this year. So women's in the uh, basement and men's on the first floor. Awesome, thank you very much. And actually in relation to that, kind of talking about how all that works, obviously the reason that we're, we're talking about this and doing these sort of events right now is within the next week, we're looking at the residence hall application opening up for fall 2021. That'll be next Thursday, April 1st. Um, and I'm, I'm curious, we'll talk kind of specifics here in a minute, uh, but I'm curious to hear from uh, you, Parker and Janae and Phil, uh, obviously for some of you, it's been a little bit longer since you filled it out than others, uh, but thinking back to when you were filling out that application, uh, what sort of tips or, or recommendations do you have that you might pass on to students who are gonna go through it uh, as far as what to consider when listing preferences or listing information, all of that sort of stuff? Yeah, so the, the application will ask you a bunch of questions sort of um, about how clean you are and, and if you like sharing your things, things like that. So the main tip I would say is be like brutally honest. Um, if it asks you how clean you are and you're like, oh, I'm pretty clean, but you know that that's not quite true, um, that's going to cause some trouble later on um, with roommates and stuff like that because it, the, the application will match you with people that have similar levels of cleanliness or like you go to bed at the same time, like that sort of thing. So I would say be honest. Um, and as long as everyone else is honest, um, the system does a really good job of matching people up. Um, so I had two roommates my freshman year and we lived very well together. I think probably because we were all honest um, on the application. So yeah, that's my one tip. Um, also, like after you get matched with people, it'll give you like a list of like a whole bunch of different people that you matched with and then you can email them um, to get in contact. So I definitely recommend like talking to people before you're like, oh, I want to be roommates with you. Like getting to know them a little bit is important because then you can kind of figure out like, oh, I think we would be good living together or no, I definitely need to go a different route. So um, be sure to contact people uh, and kind of figure out what would be best for you. Yeah, um, you also have the option if you know somebody coming into mine, like from your high school or something, you can live with them if you want to. Um, so my suite was uh, with four other people and three of them went to my high school. And that's a really good way to go. Um, personally, I would almost recommend against it because for me going into college, it was just about meeting lots of people, getting to know so many different people, getting to know different communities, things like that. And so for me, living with people that I already knew didn't open that opportunity quite as much. and all of my high school friends, it's not like I'm gonna to go to college and just never see them again. We're a small enough campus where you can still do lots of activities and hang out with them and spend time with them. So that's definitely not a concern. So for me, I kind of liked um, having the excitement, if you will, of new roommates, new people, just knew everything from time to time. So um, that's definitely personal preference though. If you wanna to, want to go with your old friends from high school, like definitely go for it. Like I'm not saying don't do it, but just something to keep in mind if you want to go into that university experience and just meeting lots and lots of people like I kind of wanted to, that might be a consideration. Excellent. And I'm all I'm glad that you all mentioned in some capacity the roommate information on there, uh, because that is such an important part of what you're sharing on that application and finding the right match and the right person to be with. Um, a couple additional things that we always like to plug for that, because like Phil said, you can, if you know people coming in, you can do that. Uh, what Parker said and shared about um, 
uh, filling out preferences, just like Janae said about um, what you prefer and who's maybe a good fit for you. Uh, we also have other resources that we've seen students who are incoming connect through. We have, uh, for example, like a Facebook group that's open for uh, accepted students to connect and get to know each other through. Uh, there's a Discord server that's out there through Minds 2025 that students can look at. It's student run, but if you want to connect and start meeting people, that's an awesome way to do it. So definitely having those conversations, that's something we always encourage people to do. There's, there's no downside, I think, to connecting uh, with more people before you get here. So, and kind of related to that, Max, this question's a little bit more for you, because um, I was just going through in the, in the chat, and we had a good question from a student about, uh, you know, how do students who can't visit in person uh, for multiple reasons get kind of a good sense of the facilities we have? I, I think especially in this sort of case, the residence halls that we might have, um, before they kind of go through and make that decision. And I know the caveat right now is, you know, we have limited resources because of COVID and everything. And I was going to drop a, a link in the chat, but what sort of recommendations could you make there as far as maybe a, a more informed decision for folks currently? Yeah, I think um, just keeping up to date on the website, um, we're going to try to get as much information there um, and as relevant information up to date as possible. Um, I don't know if tours are going to be happening this summer, um, and Max, maybe you have more information on that. Um, but yeah, with new COVID restrictions, and we're, we're always following CDC guidelines and um, uh, state and county guidelines, so we're going to try to get as much information out there to you as possible, just so you have the best idea of what hall fits your needs and, and where you want to set your preferences at. Absolutely. And in relation to that, two, two things worth mentioning. Max kind of mentioned the, the possibility of tours opening up. We, we have a pretty good feeling that once we wrap up semester, which is going to be early to mid-May uh, for us here at Mines, uh, we'll be able to start offering still limited capacity uh, as far as how many folks we can have at a given time, uh, but more regular tour opportunities for prospective students starting on a more regular cadence during the week. So stay tuned on that. We're, we're kind of finalizing that and plan to start getting more info out on it during April for those of you who might be fall 2022 students. So stay tuned for that. Um, and then the other one worth mentioning for those of you who maybe haven't seen the communication yet, um, obviously there will be adjustments and there will be some things that look a little bit different, but given trends that we're looking at and uh, availability of vaccines and other things, the plan right now for us is to be open in person this fall. Um, now, that being said, we have been open this spring and we were open in the fall to a, a pretty decent degree, uh, but being back 100% on campus, which includes the residence halls, of course, students have been living on campus uh, this semester and last semester with adjustments. But for those of you who might be wondering if that's still a question mark out there, uh, that is definitely something that we're still planning on um, having available for students in a much expanded capacity. There will still, of course, be um, restrictions or safety precautions in some cases, I'm guessing, uh, but the plan is to be 100% open, which I think is awesome. So um, excellent. Thank you for a little bit more info on that. Um, let's see. Uh, good question, I think, that came in from, from a student here. It looks like, why would someone choose or not choose to live in a themed learning community, in a TLC? Um, now, I know none of our students on the panel necessarily went through that, but as far as experiences that you might have had or folks that you know, any sort of wisdom you might share there and Max saying to you, that would be awesome, so. Yeah, from people that I know that were um, in a TLC, um, if you are really passionate about one of the areas um, that a TLC sort of encompasses. Um, so I know a couple of people that did um, adventure and leadership. So if you're really passionate about the outdoors and leadership, stuff like that, and you want to live with people that also share that um, passion, then that would be a reason to choose um, a TLC. I don't know what all the kinds of TLCs are. I can't, I think there's like seven. I can't list them off the top of my head though. Um, but basically if you want to live with people that share um, a same interest in you as you do, um, yeah, that would be a reason to choose a TLC. I also think too, that it's a really good way to meet people quickly. You're I think I'm pretty sure that you guys all move in a little bit earlier than the rest of students on campus, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but that way you have time to kind of get to know each other too before school starting so you can make friends that way. They're very like involved like in doing group activities together. So if that's something you're looking for, I recommend joining one. 
Yeah, for sure. I would agree with all that. I know a lot of the communities, they also are really tight knit after they move out of the residence halls, they're still really close together. Um, I can't really think of a reason not to. Um, the only thing I could guess is maybe there's something that may not directly interest you. I know they have like limited space and you have to like fill out an application with all the chaos of applications, you know, you have to be like on top of that if you want to get into one for sure. But no, I can't really think of a reason not to beyond that. And to echo a little bit of what they all just said, the link that I just put in chat, uh, Michael, I, I've directed it to you, but I think everybody can see it. When you go to that page, you can actually, one, learn about each of the communities, but then there's also a, a section that kind of breaks it down community by community and says, here's kind of the reason, you know, here's, here's our founding kind of like principal ideas and beliefs, and here's what might be a good fit for you. And then also gives you an example of some of the different activities that those, those floors and communities might kind of coalesce around. So if you want to explore a little bit more about that, um, for sure, that is a, a really, really good way to do so. Um, switching gears a little bit, we'll come back in, in a couple minutes and talk a little bit more about housing, more from like the timeline side. But the other big aspect, of course, about living on campus is dining, right? Meal plans and eating options and all of that sort of good stuff. Uh, and this is another area where I think, especially for students uh, living, you know, away from home for the first time, uh, this is a big area of adjustment. So um, I guess maybe. Um, if you all want to share a little bit about maybe what those sort of options we have are and what that adjustment was like for you as far as kind of what's available and, and what sort of resources are out there and all that sort of good stuff. Yeah, so I found when I came to Mines, uh, there's definitely not a shortage of food. Um, I'll cover sort of the first dining option, which is Mines Market. That's the main um, dining hall on campus. Um, so with your meal plan um, as a freshman, you have a certain number of swipes per week and one swipe will get you into Mines Market and it's sort of buffet style. So you can stay as long as you want um, and eat as much as you want. So I know some people that would go on the weekends and swipe in in the morning and stay there and do homework all day because um, they do have coffee and tea and stuff. So um, that is definitely an option, but yeah, there's no shortage of food um, and there's lots of options at Mines Market. Um, I'm sure Janae and Philip will cover sort of the rest of dining on Mines campus. Another thing too is that if you have dietary restrictions, Mines Market is sure to take care of all of that. Um, but otherwise, like most, like almost half of our buildings on campus have other dining options. One of the main ones that's aside from our main dining hall is called Periodic Table, which is in our student center, um, which has like three restaurant and um, kind of a grab and go store called Elements, which is like if you need snacks or drinks or they have like pre-made sandwiches and um, you can get sushi there too uh, if you want it. So that's kind of nice. Um, well, you get what's called munch money uh, with your meal plan, which is basically just cash that is included in your meal plan for you to use at all of these um, other on-campus dining options, which is really nice. Um, so you're not like paying extra stuff until you run out of your munch money. Um, but also in a uh, periodic table, we have a Starbucks um, and we have what's called Wow Cafe, which is like American style foods. If you want like a burger, or pizza or fried chicken. And then we have habaneros, which is similar to Chipotle. So that's in, what's in there. Yeah. And then once you live off campus, you can get commuter plans. And so the one Parker described is more on like a weekly basis. So you get like 10, 15, 19, depending which package you get of like swipes, the commuter plan will be transitioned to per semester instead of weekly. So you'll get like 40 swipes to use for the whole semester, the full year. And you can just use that whenever you'd like. And I know it's pretty common to do what he said, especially on this plan where it's more limited. Um, go in for lunch, do homework, get dinner, and then you have kind of like two for one. Um, and there's a lot of dining options in Golden too. There's a, a ton of them within walking distance you have. Uh, like we have Jimmy John's snark sandwiches, but we also have like Woody's Pizza. We have Sherpa House, which is like Nepalese buffet, uh, just to name a few. But there are quite a few options in downtown Golden, and a lot of them offer like student discounts, which is nice. That is like specifically to build on what Phil just said, like the location, as, as you'll see, or if you've been to campus, you kind of get a sense for not only are the residence halls right in close to everything on campus, right? So you're not necessarily walking these massive distances, like campus itself is right in Golden. So I remember my own college experience. I didn't go here to Mines, but I went to a similar college in the West. It was the same kind of deal. Like 
the food was awesome, but sometimes we wanted something different and to be right in the community was super, super nice for that. Um, one other thing, and Max, correct me if I'm wrong, but if I remember correctly, the residence halls also have community kitchens that students can use, correct? As far as things to check out, maybe if somebody doesn't wanna to go to the dining hall, they, wants to do, they wanna do a little bit of cooking, uh, that's something they can take advantage of, correct? Correct, yeah, each, each hall has a community kitchen and um, we tried, we limited checkout items of pots and pans just to kind of keep those touch points down this year. Um, I could see that potentially changing for next year where you can check out a pan or a pot from the front desk a board game, uh, ping pong paddles, things like that, um, knowing that we'll be uh, in a little bit of a safer space. But yes, all halls do have a, a community kitchen. And I know that this is a, a highly subjective question depending on uh, student situation and preferences and everything. But we did see a question uh, in the chat about which meal plan maybe would you recommend. I'm curious from those of you who have had meal plans or have more experience on them uh, from your own preferences or things like maybe your recommendations that you would pass on to specifically an incoming student? Yeah, so uh, when I came to Minds, I did the sort of brute force approach. I got the most uh, meal swipes possible, which is I think 19 per week. Um, and that was way too many. I definitely didn't use all of them. Um, so at the semester, I changed my meal plan to the least amount of swipes and the most amount of munch money. Um, that gives you the most flexibility uh, as far as dining options, um, because you can use your swipes at Mines Market, but then you also have a decent chunk of munch money to use um, at the other dining options on campus that don't take meal swipes. So I would recommend the one that's, I think it's like 10 uh, swipes per week and the most munch money. Um, but it really is a personal choice. If you think you're going to be um, in Mines Market a lot, then definitely go with more swipes. Kind of the opposite opinion of Parker. I got the most swipes that I could and I used them like all the time. I didn't really go out to eat a whole lot. I kind of use Mines Market as a study space like what Parker mentioned before. Like I would just sit in there all day and do my homework because you have access to food and drinks and it's nice for sustenance to keep going. So um, that's what worked for me. Well, yeah, and I would agree towards Janae's side. Mines Market was kind of like a social point for me. So all of our friends would go there at like same time of day, uh, like each day, same time lunch, same time dinner. And we would just like hang out and it'd be fun going to eat lunch when you have like a group of like 25 people showing up at once. And it was really good. It was a really good building that community uh, for when I went. So, um, and I still have like a commuter plan when I live off campus. So I think it's kind of for like the same idea. So as I mentioned, I work for the swim team. So a lot of times I'll go to Mines Market to be able to get to get to know the freshmen and the sophomore a little bit better, just because it's a really good place just to hang out and talk to people and get to know them better. So I definitely maxed it out for my time in Mines Market. And kind of related to that that flexibility or, or preferences that you all kind of touched on. Max, I apologize, I, I wasn't able to pull it up fast enough on my end. Um, but uh, if I remember correctly, the 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 dining hours or options for like when the the facilities, especially Mines Market, um, are available is pretty flexible, is it not for students as far as their schedules and timelines and everything? Yeah, I think um, it, Mines Market, for instance, I think they are open all day. They just switch meals at certain times. So I think at 1030, they start switching to lunch. And so like from 11 to 2 or 11 to 130, at least this year, um, they're open. So you can really, um, with that meal swipe, uh, if you have enough that week, you can go ahead and grab, you know, an apple and, and take it to go and, and, you know, if that's what you want to do. Um, so that, yeah, they, there's a lot of flexibility with the uh, Mines Market and um, no one's mentioned Zion because it's kind of the new dining uh, experience that's open this year. And that's kind of a uh, coffee shop quick serve uh, option that Sodexo is, is providing um, and uh, is in our new building spruce. So another uh, option that you'll have to use your meal swipes in your munch money. Awesome, thank you very much. Um, did see another question come in from Aiden. I saw it earlier, I promise I didn't forget uh, about touring dining halls and, and the residence halls in real time remotely. Currently, we just don't logistically have a way to do that for folks just yet. 
Um, we are uh, throughout April going to be at some point on uh, Mines Admissions social media, kind of giving a little bit of a deeper dive into some of the residence hall options, probably early to mid April for you. Uh, but we just logistically, we just don't have the ability right now, given everything else going on for current students. Uh, but if that changes, if we do have opportunities for that or takeovers or things like that, probably the best place to kind of keep in touch with us on that one would be our social media channels, because we always share that stuff out there. Plus I coordinate it along with Parker. So shameless plug there. If you wanna see some quality content, uh, there's some good stuff there. Um, another good question that I think came in here, um, and this, this I think is open to anybody who wants to share their experiences with it. Uh, the question is why do people buy munch money instead of using uh, credit card or cash? I remember my own experiences with what we had our equivalent to uh, munch money, but I'd be curious to hear from your all experiences and what your preferences were. Yeah, I think the main reason is because Munch Money comes with a meal plan. Uh, I don't think there's a, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there's a meal plan that comes with no Munch Money at all, maybe besides the commuter plan. Um, so yeah, it would be sort of um, a waste of money to buy a meal plan and then also use um, a credit card or cash at periodic table. That's just from what I know. Um, beyond, so if you use all of your Munch Money, which I have done multiple times, um, you can uh, use a credit card or cash at any dining option um, on campus, which is nice. But yeah, Munch Money does come included with meal plan. Yeah, I don't really have anything to add to that other than you're already paying for Munch Money, so you might as well use it. Related to that, Max, remind me, uh, uh, is Munch Money reloadable? Like, can students go back in? That I'm not an expert on, so I do not know for sure. Gotcha. No worries. And that is something, if you folks want to learn a little bit more about that, definitely email us. I'll put our email address for um, admissions and then for, for some other offices in there so we can connect you with that. My preference, similar to kind of what Parker and Janae mentioned as far as like, it's already on there, so use it, uh, I think is definitely a good thing. For me, it was also super helpful from a budgeting standpoint, um, as far as like dedicating certain amounts of money and all that sort of stuff. Um, so, now I want to take a couple minutes to kind of switch gears and talk a little bit more about the functional side of things, uh, because April 1st is coming up. And Max, I'm wondering if you can walk us real quick kind of through the timeline, application opening requirements, all that sort of good stuff. Yeah, so what I just mentioned in the chat is um, your queue in line is, is really determined by the time you, um, you submit that you're coming to Minds, uh, and that's the date that we use. Um, where you'll get your selection time. So um, that April 1st through, um, I think May 1st is really, or June 1st um, at 11.59. Um, it, it really doesn't depend on um, when you get that, um, when you fill out your application, it's when you um, intend to enroll here. So um, the benefit of that is you get more time to find your roommates. Um, so what um, the, the three past students, uh, residents here said, um, you use that time to, to fill out to, you know, that brutally honest, what do you like, what do you don't like? Uh, and then your list of roommates comes up or potential roommates and what kind of fit that is. So, um, but yeah, application opens up on April 1. It's gonna remain open until June 1. So um, it's not dependent that you do it, you know, that day, um, but th there's some time to really fill out and, and do some research on those halls. Uh, maybe take a tour if they come up um, to really figure out what you want. Um, and I know TLC application um, is I think May 1st. Um, and then uh, I think there's a, a past question about TLC move-in. Yes, TLC move-in is going to be that April 16th, that Monday, um, because you as a TLC resident are required to do the third or digger camp. Uh, and we haven't mentioned or digger camp yet, but um, yes, if you uh, are in a TLC, your, your movement date is the, uh, that Monday the 16th. Oh, go ahead, Parker. Yeah, I was just going to add really quickly, as far as the application goes, I definitely would recommend filling it out as soon as you can, even if you don't know where you want to live, things like that, because the way that it lets you uh, contact people that you sort of match with on the application is through their school emails. And before people come to Minds, they don't really check that. So I thankfully filled mine out really early and sent like 20 emails to the top 20 people and got like maybe one response. So it takes people a while. 
um, to like get back to you unless you want to like stalk them on Instagram and like DM them or something, but that is a little creepy. So uh, I definitely would recommend filling it out early. That helps a lot. And as Max mentioned, um, the big driver here again is that IE form, right? Intent to enroll form timeline. A lot of students have done that already. So if you're already in that spot, awesome. The big thing to remember, uh, May 1st is really when we're, we're asking students to have those into us by to make that decision. So uh, we know that this is kind of, um, this is this is decision window, right? Especially April is kind of that that big time, and that's why we're doing this sort of stuff. Um, so this is like the best time, especially if you started going through that window, like Max said, to educate yourself a little bit on um, those different options. Um, related a little bit to the the application, Max. These are again, I think, a little bit more technical questions for you. So I apologize. Um, single room availability. Uh, we've talked a lot about roommates and you know the different options in the different halls. Um, what does that look like for students? What's your sort of recommendation maybe for students who are looking at that or considering that? Um, I don't know. We have quite a few single rooms uh, in each. It depends on each hall of how many we have. Um, we usually can hold a few back for safe rooms, uh, you know, just kind of that housing um, you know, procedure and process that we go through. But we do have quite a few singles. I don't recommend singles because when you have a roommate, you have someone who you uh, either um, connect with or you maybe not connect with, um, but that is a good and bad thing. So it it really gets you um, out there. Um, I, I moved in just a little personal um, story. I moved into a room and I really didn't, um, you know, mesh with my roommate. I didn't get to do an application or um, uh, preferences, but I figured out that um, other people on the floor uh, are still my uh, best friends today. So it, it really depends on, on, on who you are. And, and if you want that single room and you want that privacy, then that's great. But um, we do have uh, a lot of options. And with uh, Spruce Hall that just opened up this year, there's a lot more singles out there. Um, and so I would imagine Spruce is pretty popular this next year. Um, and Elm is just a, a real, um, a solid choice, but the traditional halls, you really can't underestimate the traditional halls and that experience of having your door open and someone walking by and saying, hey, what's going on? Um, just that constant interaction. Um, those traditional halls, uh, everyone uh, always says that that was their favorite part, even though it might not seem like it when you're choosing. Yeah, I want to butt in real quick. I have something to add. I know people, and I was guilty of the same thing, asking about um, how all the dorms are laid out, blah, blah, blah. Um, and when I sort of applied for housing and chose a room, I wanted to get Maple because I wanted to have sort of a more private bathroom. Um, but that didn't matter at all. Um, I turned out to not, um, I didn't really spend that much time in Maple. I basically slept there um, and studied there but all of my friends lived in other dorms. So I was out hanging out with them. Um, I had a lot of friends in Elm. So I was in Elm a lot. Um, quick tidbit, Elm has shared kitchens on each floor, um, which is really convenient because most of the residence halls just have uh, one shared kitchen. So we made mac and cheese a lot because that's cheap as a college student. I'm rambling, but I just, um, I feel like you shouldn't worry too much about the layout of a dorm and how many people you're rooming with. And if you can get a single room, like. It's all about meeting new people um, and having these experiences. So I wouldn't worry about it too much because I know I did and um, it wasn't worth it, so. I will say I learned kind of to build off what Parker said very, very quickly uh, when I moved into my residence hall experience that 98% of what makes that experience for you, the people you meet and to a lesser degree, like the, the things you bring from home that make you feel comfortable, right? That make it feel like home. Um, it didn't matter if I was in the newest residence hall or not like that. I learned that very quickly. It's like, it's nice to have some of the new stuff, but you're going to have friends in the buildings either direction. So uh, that is absolutely a huge thing. And that's also coming from somebody who, um, I don't know if any of my student panelists share this background or not, but uh, I really didn't want a roommate at all. I have a younger brother and growing up, we didn't have to share a room together at all. So I was like, mm, a roommate, communal living, not really into that. Uh, but my parents said, no, like, you're going to do this. We did this. It's it's character building, I think is what my dad said. Uh, and it was great. My roommate and I got along really well. We lived together again, sophomore year. Uh, and then a bunch of the people that I lived with on that floor, kind of like what Max said, lived together again after uh, moving off the halls and still together at this point as friends many years later. So it really is kind of, I think when you're looking at housing options as a student, 
it really does come down to that, like what sort of sense of community can the campus offer you? And obviously we're all biased, right? Uh, but I think that what we offer here for students um, is, is pretty special, not only in, in the resources and the things that are available, but that sense of kind of community that develops between the students, whether it's academically or socially in those, those residence hall communities. So Max, was there something you were gonna add to that too? Yeah, uh, there's quite a few questions. I just wanted to plow through them real quick. Um, oh, yes, my apologies. <laughs> Ram no, 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 that's fine. Uh, bathrooms and spruce, they are um, gender neutral. So um, there's a wall of toilets that have each a door. Um, it's, an own, it's its own private door. Uh, I think it's like three inches from the floor and four inches from the ceiling. So the doors are, are tall. Um, so there's really no, uh, no sight lines or anything like that. And then showers on the other side, um, same situation where it's an individual room. Um, so you uh, have your privacy. Uh, and sinks are the only thing that are out in the open. Uh, and each bathroom looks alike um, in all 11. So, um, and then Spruce Hall, yes, they have uh, a new, it's a magnetic door hold. So um, it's tied to the fire alarm system. So if the door is propped open uh, on the magnetic hold, if there is a fire or a, a fire alarm, the door will swing shut. Um, but yes, that kind of sense of community where you can have your door open and um, you know see someone walking by and say, hey, what's going on? Um, and then buildings, co-ed, um, the traditional halls are gendered floors, uh, and that's really the only area that's um, gendered floors, just because of the, the bathroom layouts. Um, now, every other building uh, has the option, uh, Maple is suites, so you have, um, you know, that in-suite bathroom. Uh, Elm has uh, three bathrooms on each side that are uh, gendered, but then three single use on each side. Uh, and spruce are um, just that kind of semi-private um, situation there. Uh, and all dorms have AC uh, and we call them residence halls, but that's just a, a term we use. Um, we, they all have AC. The caveat to that is traditional halls have AC in the hallway. So that is one of those kind of unknown things that in the traditional halls, in order to get air conditioning, you leave your door open, which then builds on that community aspect of you can say hi to somebody walking by. So other than that, every other building has uh, air conditioning. Awesome. And I know we're coming up close on time. So the last kind of big thing I want to cover, uh, Max, maybe from your, your standpoint is like a functional thing, what it looks like. Uh, and then for my students, maybe what your experience was like and what you really enjoyed from it. Uh, we touched briefly on move-in week a little bit earlier, like what that, that kind of you're building basically toward an anticipation when school starts. So Max, maybe just walk us real quick, kind of like what resources are available and what staff provides. And then uh, Parker and Janae and Phil, if you wanna share briefly, kind of like what you enjoyed from not only moving week, but that very beginning of school window and that sort of stuff. Yeah, moving week is, is something that uh, I planned for all year and then it happens and then it's so quick and it's over, but everyone um, just kind of comes in from the community and um, we recruit a lot of student volunteers from past years and they're, they help you unload your car and they, they wheel your cart up to your room and help you unload. And you get to that sense of minds in the ore digger community and that's just real great. Um, and so uh, yeah, TLC is on the 16th um, in the third session ore digger camp. Everyone else comes in on the 18th and 19th and those days are still being determined by which floor uh, I'm trying to work out which um, which floor of which building moves in on each day, depending on volume and, and kind of numbers, just so um, it's really consistent and we don't have those big pushes. But um, move in week is exciting. Uh, and then you get to uh, meet everyone. Um, and then um, what else? What other question about move in week? Just kind of that. It's, it's really just exciting to see minds come together and, and welcome you in. Yeah, I thought um, move in week and sort of kick off week um, was really fun. I moved in early because I did the third or digger camp session since I'm from out of state. Um, so I got to move in early. I got first pick of the bed in, in our room, which was nice. Um, and what I found really funny is like they told you to label all of your stuff with like your room number and all that stuff. So I sort of did because literally they swarm your car the minute you pull up. Um, all of the volunteers do and like just like throwing things out of the car things like that was funny but like I was um, in my room unpacking some stuff after 
everything had gotten taken out of our car and someone showed up with my water bottle that didn't have my name on it or my room number. And I was like, how did they find me and where did my water bottle come from? So it's sort of funny, like how they managed to get all your stuff. Um, with that many volunteers, it's really easy to move all your stuff in. I was sort of worried about that because I lived on the third floor um, and didn't want to carry all my stuff up a bunch of stairs, but they do that for you, which is really nice. Um, can you explain Ore Digger Camp? I'll do it really briefly. Ore Digger Camp um, is basically a way for you to meet students in your class. I think there's three different sessions over the summer. I did the last one, which is right before um, move in and kick off. And they bus you out to like Winter Park in the mountains. Um, and you're put in groups of like 10. And you get to do a bunch of fun activities, um, meet new people, sort of learn about minds from current students um, that are counselors at order camps, stuff like that. I definitely recommend it if you can go. I had a blast. Um, it was really fun. And I'm still friends with people in my or digger camp group. So, yeah. Yeah, I kind of just have to agree with Parker here. Move-in was a lot less stressful than I thought it was going to be. They, he's, He was right. They literally swarmed your car. And I was kind of grateful for that, too, because I was moving into the fourth floor and it's a lot of stairs. <laughs> um, Maple does have an elevator, but when everybody's trying to move in, it can be a long wait. Um, and then I agree with him, too, on order your camp. That's one of the best parts, too. Like, I recommend. I'm still friends with some of those people I met. Um, and it's a really good way to meet people coming into mines. Just because you don't know a ton of people coming usually. So it's nice to get to know people. And then orientation week and weekend is like really long, but really fun. We do our um, M climb where you bring your 10 pound rock from home and you get the hard hat when you get here and you walk up the road um, up to the M on Mount Zion. So um, it's super fun. You do lots of fun activities and it's, it's definitely chaotic, but it's a good time. Yeah, I would agree with that. I don't have a ton more to add, but I know you you won't you won't have to touch any of your stuff once you pull in <laughs> like you literally just pull in and then they'll open your trunk and it's your trunk will be emptied in like three minutes so it's you're like oh my god they're taking my stuff away but then it'll just beat you to your room by the time you go up <laughs> so it's really fun it's, it's definitely overwhelming but I think it really encapsulates how much of a community we are, how it's all students helping out students just moving in. It's a really energetic and fun. I remember walking up and meeting my RAs. I got to my room and it's just a really cool and it's a pretty memorable experience, just that chaotic, but also like super exciting, nervous, everything kind of coming together at once. Better baggage service than pretty much any airport out there. So. Well, with that, um, we are pretty much right up at time here. I want to be respectful of our, our presenters' time and, and everybody else's. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. We know that there are questions that pop up after today and, and maybe some that we missed for you today. Um, so I dropped our emails, uh, both for admissions and for residence life uh, in that chat. So if you have questions that come up, and, and believe me, we know that they do. That's why we all have jobs. Uh, feel free to get in touch with us. Uh, I do want to say thank you to uh, especially uh, Parker and Janae and Phil and Max for joining us, taking a little bit of time out of their, their schedules, especially as we get later into the semester with lots of stuff to do. Uh, so thank you for doing that. Uh, and thank you all for joining us again for this, taking a little bit of time out of your day uh, to do this, especially with everything being virtual these days. Uh, we know it takes a time commitment. Uh, for those of you who are wondering about the recording. I saw a couple questions going about that. It will be uploaded shortly, uh, probably within the next couple of days, to our YouTube channel. So if you search Colorado School of Mines admissions on YouTube, uh, you will find it there and we can get you more info. But oh. thanks again, everybody, for joining us. Uh, hopefully you all have a good rest of your day and we'll see you soon. Take care.